Hello everybody, my name is Nemo and welcome back to another magic video. Uh, so today we're taking a look at a blue-white deck. Um, as far as control goes, blue-white is usually the option you look at first. So makes only makes sense uh, to start looking at blue-white for control. Um, so um, this is basically just a control deck that tries to win very very late game and tries to just stop the opponent from winning. Um, that's the ID behind control decks. So, uh, we have a f only a few cards that can really uh, win the game for us. We've got Talrand, of course, that can take over game. We've got the Resolute Archangel, and we've got Bane Slayer Angel. Um, all of the rest of this, well, we've got a Brimaz, and we have these Palisade Giants, which technically I, cr I guess are creatures, uh, but they're not very likely to actually win a game for us. Uh, Chasm Skulker, I guess, can win a game. Uh, he is somewhat of a threat, but he's likely going to get killed because he starts off pretty small. Uh, then we have a Skymark Rock, um, which is also more of a defensive measure than anything. Um, but Chasm Skulker, the nice thing about him is that if he has a lot of counters on it, you can blow up the board with a Planner Cleansing and get all of these Squid Tokens to attack the opponent with and hopefully seal out the game with that. Um, but yeah, other than that, we've got the Wall of Omens, because walls are nice. This one draws you a card that's perfect. That is exactly what you want in a control deck out of a wall. Uh, then we've got Brimaz, just because Brimaz is pretty good. And, I mean, we're playing white, so we may as well include Brimaz. Uh, we've got two Arrests and two Safe Passages, simply because I'm, I'm not sure which one is better in this spot. Um, depends on what the metagame is going to look like, so we, we're splitting it two and two for now. Got Bane Slayer Angel, of course, because Bane Slayer Angel is awesome. Palisade Giant helps us survive, and they have to get by him, and maybe they play more dudes uh, while they're trying to get by this guy, and then uh, we can we can delay on the Planner Cleansing or something like that. Um, I mean, if they're playing a deck that can actually just outright kill this guy, obviously we don't want to do that. But the white and black decks, um, they have to basically. Uh, give this guy a turn to save me um, because they can arrest him but it, his ability is still going to help me survive so if we're playing against black or white uh, it's not likely that they're going to be able to get rid of this and then swing in and kill me that turn so I can play him and delay a turn on planner cleansing against those decks and maybe get some more card advantage out of it because this is of course mass the mass removal in the format here planner cleansing and basically the card we're playing this deck for, because without mass removal, um, there's not a lot of point in trying to play control. So we've got Resolute Archangel, both a threat and a way of stabilizing. It resets our life total to 20, so when this guy comes down, it saves us uh, from being uh, killed by some kind of burn or whatever after we've already stabilized the board. Or uh, it just, you know, helps protect us against the creatures if they still have creatures out by the time we play this one um, and ideally it also kills them uh, we've got think twice because it's pretty good uh, chasm skulker of course like i said we we have quite a bit of card draw here so we may as well run that card because uh, it's good card gomzoa more defense against the aggro decks only two dissol dissolves because as it is now I think a lot of people are uh, running aggro decks and counter spells are better against um, other late game decks than they are against aggressive decks. Uh, then we got the Tauron which is awesome. Got four inspirations, more card draw, got the time warp here. It can help seal out the game or gives us an extra turn to draw what we need and the Skymark rocks. Uh, because it seems pretty decent against aggro decks. Free uh, toughness is probably good enough to block unless they use some kind of common trick. Um, but ideally I can attack with this and make them pick up one of their dudes. Uh, ideally a token as well. So that is the deck and let's see how it performs. Alright, well we're waiting for other players but other than that uh, this hand is not going to be keepable. I get some extra time to decide on this hand. Alright, so uh, let's draw a new hand because we're having a one lander here and I'm not sure if we can get our planes either. So, well, um, I was looking for land, but that is a little bit ridiculous. Uh, I guess I'll keep this. Not the greatest of starts, but um, this hand isn't 
absolutely dreadful. It is pretty bad though. I mean, if he's not playing an aggro deck, then neither of these cards are useful. Um, and this is gonna be too useful either. Hmm. Alright, well, good luck, have fun. Goof. <laughs> Goof. Always fun. So, Cruel Sadist is a card. It is a card. It's a 1 mana 1 1. You can use 1 black mana and tap it to and pay 1 life and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on this Cruel Sadist. And for free mana, you can tap it and remove all the uh, the plus one plus one counter from the cruel sadist and deal that much damage to target creature and at least not gain that life back so um, yeah it's kind of a controly card um, but at the same time I mean you can make it bigger but it mean you have to tap it to make it bigger so you can't also attack with it so I classify that as a control type of card um, also it, it should work well in life gain decks as a uh, um, I could drop this card Komuzo to block his one damage, but I'd rather just think twice again. Um, get some lands. Get to the rest of my deck. Because I'm starting to get worried and I'm going to be stuck with free mana and stuff like that. So. I would like to think twice. Yeah, here we go. Flash it back. I bet you didn't expect that. <laughs> Not a guard comes over. Well, we seem to be very controlling right now. Alright, so let's drop a Skymark Rock. Because I can actually do something here. And pass the turn. Why, why does... Do we need to scroll down here? Why does this chat keep blinking? What is up with the chat? The chat is having a stroke, guys. The chat is not having a good time. Um, yep. Alright, well, that's uh, that's always fun when that happens. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's typing something and I just can't see it or whatever. Okay, so, the life gain one, that, that is what he's playing. Well, life gain slash control, who knows. Who knows. There is a nice combo with the life gain... Uh, there's an enchantment that says whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. And then there's a, a card that uh, as you take away half of your opponent's life and you gain that much. So put those two together and you win the game. I don't know how I so easily clicked on that. I was clicking over here. <laughs> but uh, all of a sudden I had already selected that. I guess because there's no other target for Skymark Rock's ability. Uh, to uh, have a creature defending player controls with toughness 2 or less returned to his or her hand. To its owner's hand. Um, yep, Chad is having a stroke. Angelic Accord. Well, here's also a nice card for a life gain deck. 4 mana enchantment beginning of each end step. If you gain 4 more life this turn, put a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Unfortunately, that has more than 2 toughness, otherwise I could just, you know, do something about it. I, I'm guessing he doesn't run combat tricks in that deck. Wouldn't make sense. Um, and he's just doing this to gain some life. Alright. Um... I don't see a huge reason to play these card Gomezoas. I'm holding mass removal spells, so I may just want them for later, who knows. Um, I guess I can throw one of them out there though, because at least stop this thing from gaining life when it attacks me. And uh, that may be irrelevant in not having him gain one of those angel tokens. So Seems like a good enough cost, cost to me to do that. Um, this is so distracting. <laughs> that chat token, man. That, that token? What? <laughs> chat token. A 1-1 one, one chat token. <laughs> this, this chat icon blinking there, it's so distracting. Okay, so this 
makes me lose or whatever. Oh, it deals four damage and he gains for life. Okay, I thought it was this target player loses for life, but no. So you can actually kill one of my guys with it, and it has convoke. Um, so he's gonna have to tap this thing to be able to play it. Kill one of these, gain some more life. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that puts him pretty safe. And he gets an angel. Alright. Um, not, not much we can do about that, because we can't really attack. We don't have mana to play anything, so let's pass the turn. And stare at the blinking chat symbol some more, <laughs> as it distracts us. And Sanguine Bond, that is the card I was talking about. Alright, so enchantment, whenever you gain life, target opponent lose that much life. And Elixir of Immortality, that is 5 life lost for me when that hits the board. But if I get to Planar Cleansing, then I get a lot of very important permanents uh, from his side, gone from the battlefield. So that would be pretty awesome. So, untapped land please. Perfect. Guess I could have attacked first, he may have expected a trick, and who knows. Um, I don't expect he would let the free free through, but who knows. Pro I mean, it is a better play <laughs> than not attacking. So, not a huge deal, but not the perfect play, so to speak. Um, yeah, pretty much a lot of card advantage gotten by Planner Cleansing here. Um, Alright, yeah, that's his combo right there. If he uses this, whenever you gain life this turn, each opponent loses that much life. In combination with Sanguine Bond, then, um, let's see, whenever you gain life, the opponent loses that much life, and this. Oh, it's the same. It's the same thing. But this one stacks, I think. So, it stacks with Sanguine Bond, and it stacks with itself. So, yeah, it is also can give something lifeling. Yeah, I mean, I die pretty soon to that. It's not an immediate kill combo, but it is pretty qu a pretty quick, qu quick clock, I would say. So, um, we're gonna just play Bane Slayer here. Keep this Resolute Archangel. Um, let's say go. Try to play the 5-5 five five Angel and the 4-4 Angel. Obviously you want as much value from the Resolute Archangel as well, and I'm at 18 life, but um, I don't know, because I'm gaining 5 life when I swing with Bane Slayer as well, so it's like, I don't think I, I will be able to gain that much value. If he kills this one and then attacks, then uh, I'll get some value off the Resolute Archangel, but at the same time, if that's the case, then he would have killed the Resolute Archangel, I then played the Bane Slayer, and that also will gain me life, so... It's like whatever, but I played the 5-5 five five Angel instead of the 4-4 four four Angel, that's what it comes down to. So please um, use some abilities to make me lose life as I attack, so that um, when I play the Resolute Archangel I actually gain some life. No. Alright, well, that's always fun. Um, I don't really want to overextend. Uh, I think I'll just play this Guard Gomazoa and say go. Actually, because... He could also just be, be rocking the Planner Cleansing, and uh, I wouldn't like to play both my Angels into that. On the other hand, maybe it's worth trying to kill him as fast as possible. Who knows? Who knows? He's drawn over a quarter of his deck, so that um, he, if, if he runs to Planner Cleansing, He'll have a little bit over a 50% chance to have found one by now. So. Okay. Not much happening. Uh, yep. Let's think twice on this one. If I draw a counter spell or something, I'll feel much more comfortable dropping the Resolute Arcane. Although, do I have enough mana to keep that open as well? No. Uh, okay. More card drawing. There's a Dissolve. Great. So now, um, 
I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And that means um, I need an untapped land next turn to be able to play Resolute Archangel and Dissolve. So he's making this guy bigger so that eventually it's going to be able to kill my Bane Slayer, I guess. Which, I mean, Dissolve doesn't help against that, so that's something. Oh, hang on a second. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and Dissolve that. You don't get a Bane Slayer as well. Especially not since it's more powerful on your side. Um, I'll keep Terran on top. I can play that and save passage. I assume he'll want to keep pumping this guy up and then it's no use attacking with these two because I block this one, this one dies, I only take two. Um, I guess he can gain two life, but whatever. So I assume he doesn't attack here, but... Um, yeah, I mean, if, if he doesn't care about killing my Bane Slayer with this thing, then probably attacks with both these. But he probably cares about killing my Bane Slayer with that thing. Let's be honest now. So, uh, if I drop Telrund, um, then he can obviously kill it with his Cruel Sadist. But then again, that means he's going to take a lot longer to kill my Bane Slayer engine, so... Um, on the other hand, I could also... Is this minus one, minus one? No, it's damage. Okay. Um, he can gain a bunch of life. Yeah, I think it's worth uh, playing Resolute Archangel here, because it puts me on lethal, and it means he has to do something about it. And this Cruel Sadist is one turn off from being able to kill the Resolute Archangel. He can make it a 4 four. well actually he'd have to make it a 5-5, five five. so he's actually two turns off from killing this thing. Uh, Shani's Pride Mate doesn't help, what's that last card in your hand? Maybe he gain life this turn, and then he's going to suffer the past. Okay, so he's gonna gain two life, uh, which <laughs> means that I'm one damage short of killing him, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, I assume you just uh, exile Planner Cleansing in case I got someone to bring it back. Nope, Card Gomuzoa and something else. I don't even know what it was. Let's see. Oh, he did. He did exile Planner Cleansing. Okay, makes sense. All right. Um, Again, though, he's two turns off from being able to kill the Resolute Archangel. But I won't drop my Tauren here. He can... Um, no, he can't. He should have tapped this at my end step. Then he could have used that to kill Card Gomozoa and then attack with this and give it lifelink and something like that, but whatever. I've got safe passage either way if he tries to survive using lifelink in some form or fashion this turn. Uh, nope, he's activating that ability and whenever he gains life something happens. And that is damage. Yep, alright. Safe passage. This is loses life, not uh, takes damage, so it is going to lose me some life still. And it is going to gain him some life still. But I mean, even, even so, my main slayer would have been lethal even if this guy didn't survive. And the chat symbol is still distracting me. But, um, there we go. Mission accomplished. I assume he has nothing. For zero mana and zero cards in hand. GG, guy. GG. And welcome back. Game numero dos. I think dos is two. Who knows? I don't, I don't speak. Whatever that language is. <laughs> uh, so, we've got an inspiration here. I guess we can keep this. It's really slow. Um, 
Yeah, we'll keep it. Not a huge fan. Okay, well, it looks like a mirror match of sorts. Uh, okay, good. Wall of Omens helps, because it at least allows me to play something really, even. I mean, it is better than drawing any other card. Mostly because, uh, unless other uh, card draw that is. Mostly because it cycles itself and means there's one less card in my deck. Uh, when I drop it so that there's a higher chance of the card I would have drawn if I didn't draw this to now be a good card <laughs> I suppose something like that who knows go ahead Mr. Jeremy he uh, has a traveler's amulet so I, I, uh, I'm curious what kind of deck this is that needs a traveler's amulet a free color deck without green in it is my assumption because it's the only type of deck that I would run Traveler's Amulet in, I think. Okay. Blue, white, black. Asphodel war Warrior. We're gonna see something interesting here. Um, I'm gonna drop Brimaz here, and if that survives, I get to dissolve his kill spell for the rest of the... Well, once he tries to play that. If he tries to play it on my turn, then he is the idiot. Or just not very familiar with the game yet. But I assume that if he has something, he'll use it on his turn. But if he does not, then the upside is really big to having played Brimaz and now having a counter spell. So, uh, as that is the case, and um, yeah. Let's attack. Next turn, uh, if he doesn't do anything then I'll be able to drop a wall of omens and still keep dissolve open so not in that much of a hurry to play my inspiration so uh, this thing can attack for free every turn he'll, he'll just kill the tokens that I make with it but uh, it's also a pretty big blocker that is keeping his early creatures in tome in, in tome? I don't know what word am I looking for? What is this? Cultivate. Um, well, he's playing a three color deck. So he's actually playing a four color deck. He's pl probably playing a five color deck, guys. Let, let's be honest. Let's dissolve this. Let's try and ruin him. Uh, and... Yeah, I'll, I'll put that on top, so that instead of playing Inspiration next turn, I can play two Walls of Omens. That should be fine. Or I could play a Guard Gomozoa, but whatever. I'd rather play two, guard, two Wall of Omens and try and get through my deck faster. The only difference between uh, putting this on the bottom or on top is that, well... Um, now I get an 04 out of the deal as well as the card I would have otherwise gotten. So. Planar cleansing. And there's a Celestia. Like he's seriously just playing black, white, blue, and green. No red yet. Alright, um, so we're missing a white to be able to play our planar cleansing in case I wanted to. Uh, so you can triple block Brimaz. And then I get to kill one of his guys, because this. Oh, this regens for free mana. Get to kill two of his guys, uh, including the Selesnia Evangel, um, which is probably a decent deal. And then we drop Bane Slayer. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that deal if he wants to make it. If he's got something like a, a one mana black spell that gives minus one, minus one things to my Brimaz, then. Fine, you got me, but yeah, okay, he's not willing to make the trade. So, 
Uh, let's drop the Bane Slayer Angel and have an actual threat on the board. Now he needs to deal with it. He's at three mana, so um, I assume that it's gonna be a long time for him to uh, play Planar Cleansing if it's in his deck. Uh, like, is this just four color good stuff, or what? What kind of deck is this? I really don't know. Tokens. All kinds of small guys. Who knows? Who knows? Um, so obviously he'll now block with the Mausoleum Guard if I attack with Bremias. So I want to attack with Bremias. Uh, yeah, that seems like decent tappage. Let's do this on my turn. So that if I get a land out of it, I can play it. Nope. Right, and it also informs me a, bit, a little bit more before I attack. And uh, since he doesn't have mana open, and I know I'm attacking with a flying, he can't block anyways. It doesn't, uh, th there's no need to play it on my second main phase, because it's not like he can really make decisions during blocking. That would be affected by whether or not I play this first or second main phase. Um. Alright, 3-2 flyer that, that can block this thing. Not very well, but it can block. And there's my third white color. Okay, next turn we can drop the uh, uh, Resolute Archangel if we so desire. And I don't know if we so desire. Okay, he's going to go to one life. I'm sitting at six mana. I can play Tauron, but I can't also play Safe Passage. Um, on the other hand... I haven't seen a red from him yet, he needs two red to be able to play a uh, thing that deals two damage and that doesn't even really wipe my board, so I think I'm safe dropping a Tauron here and putting on some extra pressure because he needs to deal with the uh, Bane Slayer or he needs to chomp it. I mean, he needs one more land still to play Planar Cleansing. So, I mean, it's possible he chomp blocks here and then plays the Planar Cleansing. But if that's the case, then that's the case, and then I win with Resolute Archangel, all right? Pray on, okay. All right, well, I guess that is uh, pretty good. <laughs> Wish I had Safe Passage open here. That would have been really sweet. If only the Azorius Guildgate was not an Azorius Guildgate, but just the planes. Can't complain too much. I'm running four guild gates in this deck. I don't know if that's the right decision, really. I mean, I hardly ever have too much trouble in a dual color deck with mana. Um, and getting it tapped may be an issue, so. I think I'll drop my Skymark Rock, that's actually more dangerous than a Resolute Archangel. To him. Yeah, I mean, he could definitely be running Planar Cleansing, but then again, he is some kind of token deck, or I don't even know what this is. So I assume that um, he's probably not even running it. So let's let's drop the Resolute Archangel here. Or, I mean, the, uh, the Skymark Rock. And this thing is more dangerous because it makes him pick up a dude, which means he needs more blockers. And that is the tap land. So, if he has Planar Cleansing, he can't play it. And that is the thing. Jeremy, are you about to die? We'll find out in the next episode of... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, making another token. Jeremy is making the tokens. I don't even know what kind of accent that is. I'm just using an accent. For the heck of it. Um, but this looks like lethal. We'll see if it is. Uh, let's make him pick up the assault griffin. Maybe there's a. It's better to make him pick up the spirit, but if he has some kind of trick, he can then trade with the assault griffin. So. Or a, uh, a removal spell for Bane Slayer, and then he could then trade the assault griffin for this thing, whereas now um, he has the chump block, kill this thing. Play the Assault Griffin and then I get to make him pick up the Assault Griffin and get in for lethal with this thing. So, yeah, this is probably better. 
All right, well, uh, that is the GG, it seems. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. My name is Nemo. My name will still be Nemo next time. We'll be taking a look at another different deck. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to build the control deck. Um, Blue-white seems to be the obvious way of going, f uh, going for it, but also white-red, which seems uh, like it could be powerful as control. Um, I haven't built that one yet, so I, I wouldn't really know. You can obviously combine all three of the colors uh, and have a blue-white red deck you can also make blue white black um, all kinds of stuff that can be done uh, as far as control decks go but this seems to be the most obvious one um, so that's the, the one i'm showcasing first hope you enjoyed this one and i'll see you next time